Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the Creative Process Podcast with myself, Jared Klein, episode 92. Obviously, we have a guest on, but first, I just want to reach out and say thank you. Thank you for coming on today. Thank you for listening to previous episodes. And if you are a new listener, thank you for dropping by and putting some trust in me to be an entertainer. <laughs> that's always a that's always a questionable thing um, when it comes to new listeners. But this one's going to be great. We have an awesome guest on today, um, and Ryan Dean. Ryan, thank you for coming on today taking the time out of your day to um i know we connected a little bit on twitter but to talk to practically a stranger (laughs) yeah absolutely i'm excited to be on well that's awesome um but yeah i guess let's get right into it if you don't mind introduce yourself to the people that don't know who you are and then we will uh we'll get into what we have slated for this uh this evening awesome well like you said my name is ryan dean i am currently the creative media designer for wisconsin badger football um, before that, I was at Baylor for a year, and I went to school at Nebraska. That's kind of when I started getting into it, and I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, so working for the Badgers has kind of always been a dream, so it worked out pretty good. Cool. Yeah, that's actually something I was going to I was gonna ask you about later on, but I mean, since you mentioned it, why don't you kind of just go into it? You went to Nebraska for school, and then you ended up at, at Baylor. Was that just like your first out of school, your school job, and then kind of finally ended up here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I went to Nebraska for school. Um, I knew I wanted to go to a school that had big football ties, whether they were good or not. Um, <laughs> they turned out to be not very good, but it was still a ton of fun. I really enjoyed that. And then COVID kind of hit, and we everybody went home. Mm-hmm. And so... I needed something to fill a whole bunch of my time. And I saw the massive spike in creative content that was coming out of college teams and thought it would be fun to get into it. So I reached out to someone at Nebraska and kind of went from there. And my old boss, his name was Ora Garst. He is now a high school football coach in Wyoming, but he had a connection at Baylor and kind of got my foot in the door there. And that in a way was kind of one of my first job opportunities out of college. And I took it because I knew I needed something Mm -hmm. and going into it, I kind of knew that was not the end all be all. Like I knew that was just a spot to get in and make as many connections as I could. And it was at the end of the season and I knew I kind of wanted a change. I was ready for something different, Mm -hmm. ready to get home, ready to get closer to family. Um, My fiance had started grad school at Wisconsin. So I know I kind of wanted to get closer to her and I reached out to a ton of people at Wisconsin looking to see if they had any opportunities and they ended up having something open and it was about 15 minute FaceTime conversation and they offered the job (laughs) and I was was perfect. It was was awesome just because my parents had had Badger season tickets for 25 years and I'd gone to plenty of games with them. Mm -hmm. So being able to come and work for a team that I grew up rooting for was was pretty sweet Mm -hmm. yeah i mean i bet any other kids from wisconsin listening to this can atone to their you know their if they're into sports obviously their love for wisconsin badger athletics right i grew up just like you um from central wisconsin not milwaukee but still from wisconsin um and you know just adoring badger athletics and like seeing you know like I'm going to the high school basketball tournament or uh, every, every single year in Madison and every, you know, seeing some of those players that balled out there, you know, playing for the Badgers when they, when they moved on, um, you know, yeah, absolutely. And like even just this, that type of stuff, like idolizing, you know, Badger players. So being able to, you know, I can only imagine being in your position. You're like, you know, you looked up to the athletic programs for so long in your life, and now you're like, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm helping out. You know, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the scenario where, you know, you're. I mean, the stuff that you guys produce over there is fantastic. You guys do an amazing job. Um, I appreciate it. And you know, I can only imagine the excitement when you go into work every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I was starting to kind of look for jobs in that Baylor off season, I had reached out to the Bucks. I'd reached out to Marquette Brewers. Anybody that had a team because mm-hmm. I was really just ready to kind of get back home and work with somebody that I knew mm-hmm. and Wisconsin just happened to be perfect. And I kind of always have liked college athletics just a little bit more, mm-hmm. um, a little bit more pre NIL because of how 
much it meant them to play the game, like to get to that next level. Mm -hmm. So I always appreciate that a little bit. But yeah, it's definitely an awesome job and it's really exciting to get to go into work and be a part of that every day. Mm -hmm. So you're a lead lead designer, creative media designer. Like what's what what again is your exact title? So my title is creative media designer, okay. but it's pretty arbitrary on a daily basis. So our mm. our creative team consists of so we have a creative director at the top and then we've got maybe three videographers, and then myself as the graphics graphic designer and photographer. And we also have one more person that does social media. So we all have our roles and, and we make the thing go and mm -hmm. we get content out and it's just been a whole lot of fun getting to, getting to work with some really talented people. Mm -hmm. So you're just for football. Do you like, do you sprinkle yep. in any of the other sports or do you just hire it in football? Um, I'm only football, but I do assist like with ideas for some of the other sports or mm -hmm. like, if somebody is kind of in a rut, I'll, I'll make sure to reach out and, and see if I can assist in any way. And I think another part of it is that football is seemingly, or at least at Wisconsin, is driving our design style, which I love because I feel like it's been a really fun process trying to find like the best way for us to move forward. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of our other sports, we have some really talented designers that are working with all the other sports, volleyball, basketball, any of those that are slowly starting to move into the look that we have. And that's been really special to be able to kind of help out in that way. But yeah, for the most part, it's just football. Do you know Nolan Kromke? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I talked with Nolan quite a bit. Yeah. I had him on the, I had him on the podcast. Uh, oh my gosh. A while back. I think last season I had him on the podcast, um, last football season. Um, yeah. Yeah. I love what Nolan is like again, he's slowly moving into that like really like simple, like deep reds. Like we just got to hit what we have mm -hmm. because there's not other schools that have what we have. Like, so it's been a lot of fun to just kind of collaborate with, with some of the other people we have here. Mm -hmm. For sure. So let, let's talk about that. You mentioned like the deep reds and stuff, right? Wisconsin is, is synonymous for that red and white, right? I feel like if you're from Wisconsin, you follow Wisconsin football or anyone who sees Wisconsin football, you don't, you know, you don't see many other colors sprinkled in other than that traditional red and white. So when, mm -hmm. when hitting that, I mean, obviously there's, I mean, I mentioned the word tradition, but there's a big tradition behind Badger football, especially, you know, in the local areas and especially in Madison itself. But when talking about creative and when thinking about creative and what to develop for this upcoming season and now that you're in it, what were those conversations like going back and, you know, ideating and concepting and stuff like that? Yeah, so I think the people that brought me in and the people we already had here in terms of um, creative really trusted and understood that I knew what I was doing, which mm -hmm. meant a lot. Um, they brought me in with the understanding that I was going to be able to help design and develop a new look for us, um, which was, like I said, a lot of fun. And just as a fan and a person from Wisconsin, I had never really seen like a hard, like this is our style mm -hmm. from Wisconsin football content. And I knew that that was a huge opportunity for me to be able to like get in at the ground level. We're starting fresh we're going to do our way and we're going to do it right. And that was big for all of us because it was just something that the people higher than us just kind of trusted the process and, and understood that they have the right people in the positions to get, get what we want accomplished. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the big thing that I see, like when I scroll on, like the main, the main way I see your guys's content is through Instagram. Um, mm -hmm. I think it just seeing creative content on Instagram is just so much better. I think in my opinion, just that's the best mm -hmm. social media platform for it. But like just scrolling through your feed, like the emphasis you guys are putting on the saturation of the red and like really showcasing, you know, this is Badger red, this is Badger football. Yeah. This is like our brand, you know, you're putting mm -hmm. so much emphasis on that just that like impact of 
you know, Wisconsin. And like, yes, there's other, there's other reds, like there's other, um, there's other teams with, with red. I mean, you mentioned one Nebraska, um, mm-hmm. you know, they're predominantly red and white as well, but like, I may be biased here, but you know, seeing that <laughs> saturation of the red and the way you are editing the photos and you edit the photos too, I would, I would guess, right. You shoot them, you edit yep. them. Just yep. the yeah, the way you guys are like editing them, like everything else is a little bit more desaturated. Like the greens aren't super green, but that red just pops right off the screen. You're able to yep. recognize, you know, what it is, who it's from, you know, very very easily. So kudos. There's this photo I'm looking yeah, at right now. It's, um, I think it's from it's from two days ago. It's uh the main guy in the middle is number fifty three, but it, there's like you see white pants. The only main color that's in is red jerseys and then there's kind of a gray sky i think that's just oh my goodness it's just so appealing to look at that that was that was one i loved i got right in the huddle and took it between some legs and it was it was perfect it's so appealing to look at you guys are doing such a great job over there i how many so you're the only graphic designer do you guys have like interns that work with you um yeah i have two interns that are they've been awesome one of them he was a transfer from where was he at? I think he was at Whitewater. And then another one is just starting his sophomore year. And both of them have been awesome, just asking as many questions as they could. And I told them from the start, I was like, please, anything you need, like ask, because mm-hmm. that's all it takes is I've got as much information as I can. And if I don't have it, we'll find someone that does. Mm-hmm. And they've been awesome. But yeah, as, as far as like a full time designer, it's just myself. Okay. So how, how do you think, what do you, what do you think of the workload? <laughs> it's tough. And so when I was hired, I was hired as the recruiting designer with an understanding that I would also do social content. And so that was as much 50, 50 as we could at the beginning, but it inevitably like social took over and mm-hmm. recruiting would take over from week to week. So that was tough, but we did just bring in, um, his name is Jake Bear. He just graduated from Cincy. Um, he's been helping out a ton on recruiting side. So that's been giving me some more time to work um, on our main content, which has been a ton of fun to develop this look for the, for the season. Mm-hmm. Have, did you consider, um, you know, older looks and older Badger football looks when, um, when developing the creative? Cause like you got a lot of grunge in here. You got a lot of, um, like when you show like photo elements and stuff, it's, it's pretty distorted. You, you use a lot of texture mm-hmm. in there. Is that, is that more of like a aesthetic thing or were you kind of reaching back at, you know, the history of Badger football? Um, it's a little of both. So like photo preset wise, I loved the look that Badger football video had. So I paused a video, took a photo that I had and built a Lightroom preset off of that and loved it. And we've stuck with it since we built it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is like, like you said, punch the reds and drop the greens because we are so dangerously close to looking like Christmas, every (laughs) picture we have. So that's been a lot of fun just trying to find that perfect balance that like, likes pops the reds, makes our players like skin color stand out. Cause that was a big thing for me is just like, they are who they are. So let's, Let's show them. Mm-hmm. Let's not desaturate skin color, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, then with the grunge textures, I've just seen and known a lot of designers that use it really well. So that was kind of that part of it. And just needing something to like frame the piece, but not necessarily be a focus on it. Like mm-hmm. I want it to be there, but I more just don't want a flat background for sure did you use like my displacement yeah go ahead yeah so we nolan actually purchased a displacement pack a while back and we've been having a ton of fun kind of experimenting with that and that's been a lot of fun to kind of like develop our own displacement maps once we kind of figure out how to do that Mm -hmm. and so yeah that's been a lot of fun and uh, a big part of our uh, 2023 season look hell yeah Sorry if I interrupted you. You were you were no, saying yeah, something good. else. <laughs> yeah, I was just I was just gonna say my biggest mentor. His name is C.J. Campbell. He is now the director of creative at Nebraska, which is where I met him. Mm-hmm. And he spent a few seasons as the lead graphic designer at Ohio State. And so I 
talk with him almost on a daily basis, just as much as I can, getting getting as much information from him as I can. And I've, he's always done texture really well and done white space really well. Mm -hmm. So he is who I am thriving to be a lot like. Although we're rivals, we can still um, pull a lot of stuff from each other. And I think we do a really good job of bouncing each other or bouncing ideas off of each other. Mm -hmm. For sure. I mean, yeah, if, 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 um, if, if that, Met, like the biggest thing, I guess I was kind of stumbling over my words there, but the biggest thing that I've mentioned, especially on this podcast, but I've mentioned to coworkers and, and, and friends of mine is like finding that mentor can help the development of, of, you know, self-driven, um, self-driven projects, whether it be personal, you know, for fun projects or whether it be stuff you're working on at your own, you know, your own gig and your own job, you know, that connection and that information that you gain from a mentor can help so much, you know? Yeah, like absolutely. You, you talking about you to use usability of white space and you know everything like that. Like your your questions and your answers that you're getting and how you're learning is, I mean, you can see it. Like these graphics that you guys are shelling out and that you're making and you know they're just done so well. The composition of everything is just done so well. So like, if that doesn't if that doesn't say anything about you know having a mentor and the, in the profitability of having a mentor. I don't know. I don't know what is when I say profitability, yeah. I'm going to clarify there for the audience. When I say profitability, I don't mean monetary. I mean, you know, the acceleration of, of one's skill in that, that may have been the wrong word, but, um, but yeah, yeah. I think the biggest way I, I learned from that was he would send me just straight up JPEGs of final pieces and he'd be like, recreate this. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we went very different ways in how we got it done, but they would come out the same. Mm -hmm. And it was cool to like walk through my process with him and he'd be like, I had no idea you could do that. Mm -hmm. And so we learn, learn a ton of stuff from each other. Like the, one of the biggest things I've taken from him is the way to give a player a floor, like using the turf. It's there. We mm -hmm. might as well use it. Mm -hmm. So that was a big thing I learned from him that I utilize a ton. And so it's just, like I said, just practice as much as you can. Take other people's work. You don't have to post it anywhere. Just take it and practice and do, see if you can recreate it because you're going to learn a ton from just trying as many tools as you can to get to that final piece. Mm -hmm. So the big thing that I, that I struggle with, um, is utilizing photo and text. Um, the mm -hmm. one that I'm seeing right here is just this Hunter Wooler um, post that I'm just showcasing his tackles, interceptions, and his sack from from last week. Wasn't he the defensive? Yeah, defensive player of the yep. week, Big Ten defensive player of the week. But utilization of text and photo, um, and you know, still being able to hit that composition and still being able to make sure it's you know eye catching. Um, mm -hmm the next step above that would be like you utilizing, you know, the, I want to say the art form of like creative edits and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. That's what I kind yeah. of view it. But what I have a question here coming for you. Um, what, like, do you run into struggles keeping, keeping like your creative, your more creative stuff on brand at all? Um, do you ever yes find yourself no. having that issue? Um, I think one of my biggest in weaknesses is like what you're talking about trying to put text on a photo just because I think a lot of times as the person who took the photo the photo will speak for itself mm -hmm. and I don't always think it needs text but if like we're in the situation where we need it to have it I do sometimes struggle trying to figure out how it should go on here or like I want it to be front and center but I also want the picture to talk mm -hmm. so that's a big thing that I'm trying to get better at and there's a lot of people that do that really well like Jonathan Chavez who he's, he's at Stanford now he was the USC designer he did that really well and like I said I've tried to take pieces of his and try and recreate it just because I would love to get better at composing pieces that focus on the photo but still get that information across mm -hmm. so I think that's that's a big thing that I'm trying to get better at but in terms of trying to keep stuff on brand, when I got here, I built a camera raw, it's like 11 layers deep at this point, just a raw smart filter that mm -hmm. I put, at, put on every single final PSD. 
and that just helps me tie in makes all make sure all the reds are going to look consistent all the grain is consistent like our blacks are matted out so that has helped a ton and i've told our students about that and they love that little trick because like when you're taking a photo especially with like white balances you can get a little orange you can get this and that and this smart filter has helped a ton in keeping things super consistent mm -hmm. so i think that's where we thrive at least at wisconsin is having those presets and smart filters and like LUTs for videos and that helps us stay uh, within the brand no matter kind of what the content is looking like Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mentioning presets, I've, I've just recently gotten into, you know, utilizing and, or the utilization and exploration of, of presets and actions and stuff like that. I mean, I've been designing since I'm, since I was 13, probably using, using Photoshop since I was 16. And like, this is the first, first year I've been, you know, exposed <laughs> to, to camera yeah. raw presets and, and actions and stuff like that. And, um, for some reason I had like a, I had like a bad taste in my mouth whenever those things kind of came up. Cause I was like, Oh, I gotta, you know, have to build it, you know, have to build everything, mm -hmm. build it from the ground up, you know, make everything, yeah. make all these adjustments and, and learn that way. But you know, the realization is like, that helps so much, especially, you know, in your case, the, your workload, like I bet, I bet that just helps streamline things. So, so much easier, you know? editing a photo, especially editing of photos. You have that one, you have that one preset that you do. Maybe you have to tweak a little thing here and there, but you know, when you're dealing yeah. with hundreds of photos after a game day, you know, maybe thousands, who knows, maybe thousands of yeah. photos. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, just the, that just allows, allows, you know, workflow just to be so much easier. I don't, I don't know about you, but like just me being able to like, when I, when I pick a photo out like off on online or something, I, I know I got a preset that's going to be able to fill things out, get a look that I want. And it takes me, you mm -hmm. know, half, if not a quarter of the time, you know, when, yeah. when going through and yeah, oh my goodness. It's it just, yeah. And it, it helps a ton too on game days for us. Like our workflow for like taking and posting pictures is super helpful. I am able to just pull pictures right off the camera, throw them in, mobile Lightroom, throw a preset on it, like you said, minimal adjustments, because it's, it's like 98% there, mm -hmm. and then export and it's posted two minutes later. So it's a ton of help just to have that preset ready that you feel confident in. And I think we're probably on like our fourth iteration of this preset, but it's slowly just trying to figure out what works best. Mm -hmm. And it helps a ton, especially on game days when you have another play coming 20 seconds later and you need to get this photo out like now. Mm -hmm. Like we just had Jake Cheney made a huge sack. We want to get that picture out before something big happens. And mm -hmm. having those presets helps us a ton when it when it comes to in-game posting. Do you guys use like a cloud system or something for like photo drop and everything like that? Um, we have a couple other photographers that are just freelance guys that do, um, I think they just put, photos in like a box link or a google drive link or something like that um for myself on game days i'm usually pulling at most 40 pictures that are just selects that are we want to get out in game so i'm able to just save copies straight to my phone and then airdrop them to our our uh, social media person so we can just get them out right then um for like after the game like this last weekend against georgia southern i had uh like 2,800 pictures from the game. So I went through them on Saturday night, Sunday morning, ended up with 900 selects, mm -hmm. which is a ton. Mm -hmm. But like that same thing with the preset, I'm able to throw it on all 900 and then go through individually and adjust from there. Mm -hmm. And we will upload everything onto open door. So our guys get tagged on it and then they have it ready to post within 24 hours of the game. So mm -hmm. That's super helpful for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, open doors. I haven't heard that in a while. I don't think anyone that have that has worked that I've had in the podcast that works in collegiate athletics has mentioned that. I've I've seen it on Twitter. Is it like a is it like a hub for you know for the players where you know you can I mean obviously you drop photos there but like what does it act as? Yeah, so open doors. It actually started in Lincoln, Nebraska. So I got exposed to it there. Okay. Um. It. It's a place 
it's a lot for NIL, but it helps players. Um, they can kind of put their brand on there, and people can go and like ask Braylon Allen to do this, and it helps like streamline posting. So like, if Pepsi has a post, they can send it to him on Open Doors, and he can post it from there. Mm-hmm. So it helps them with a lot of like sponsored content that NIL does, but it also just is a place for them to kind of help manage their social medias because it'll help. It'll talk about like their following growth and like interactions on a post and stuff like that. There's a lot of other services that do it as well. Mm -hmm. Like when I was at Baylor, we used influencer. So it's pretty much the same thing. It's just a place for them to keep content and easily um, natively post right from open doors. Okay. Yeah. The emergence of, of all that, that new tech, I guess I can put a label on it, all that new tech for, you know, to help, um, make the whole NIL, you know, and, you know, the, the accessibility and, and the ease of players being able to get content from the people that are shooting said content and being able to post that, mm-hmm. like all that, that whole landscape has just changed so much. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's crazy. insane. <laughs> It is so insane. Does Open Doors, do they, I mean, this is basically like a, like a plug for Open Doors, basically. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to plug your socials in the middle of this. <laughs> Anyways, guys, in the middle of this podcast, take a little break, go down below, check out Ryan's socials, do that now. Okay. Enough Open Doors plug. We're doing that for free. Let's link all, all of Ryan's stuff is down below. Go check out Ryan's stuff. Go check out his portfolio. Go check out his, his Twitter. Um, do you want anything else down there? Do you want like your... I saw in your you have an Instagram and a LinkedIn is is that is that all right if you, if, you, if I just do your um, website and a Twitter yeah whatever you want I gotta go update my portfolio now with all <laughs> my current stuff that's usually that's usually an off season project but throw it in there okay yeah I'll I'll throw it in there yeah enough 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 shameless plug to open doors we're we're moving on from there um something that I thought was very interesting trenches at the beginning of the year posted a top what was it top 30 i think it was a top 30 i have the yeah, tweet I think it was. bookmarked here yeah a top 30 2023 college football design rankings and wisconsin sat at number 26 to start the year is that like a, i hope i hope they keep that going and i hope they have i don't think they've updated you know rankings as the no, season has gone not on. seen an update no because freaking akron is number five is akron that good I don't know the last piece of content. I'm not I'm not hitting on anybody from Akron, <laughs> but I have not seen a piece of content come out of Akron ever. Uh, that I love that they did it because it is going to be motivation to a lot of people, like myself, just to get better. Yeah. There was a lot of people left off the list, but like you can't put everybody on it. Mm-hmm. Well it's thirty schools and you know, they're picking from yeah. you know. And yeah. it, no, it was based it was on... awesome to be at least featured which yeah. is cool for us. But like I said, it's just motivation to get better. And I I took a ton of self-pride in being 26 just because it makes me at least happy to know that people are seeing the content and liking it, which mm-hmm. is a good thing. For sure. So, but as always, there's the only way is up. So that's, <laughs> that's the biggest part for us. Yeah, I was going to ask, where, where do you think you guys sit now? I mean, obviously you would say one, but... um no we are not one i wish i think there's a lot of a lot of really really talented designers out there um like i mean selfishly i think wisconsin's up there i think nebraska does a really good job and nebraska does a really good job athletics wide like they have a very very aggressive and really solid design profile that they use across all sports which is huge and i would love to get to that point um ohio state as always does a really good job um auburn does a terrific job there's just too many schools to to uh name everybody that that should be on that list Mm -hmm. yeah there's yeah there's there's like some schools that i've like seen before um that i see consistently i mean um, Jordan Lang and I are good buddies. George is on there, number nine. Well, he's mm-hmm. basket. He's basketball though. He's he's not, he's not football. But I see Georgia football all over the place. They yeah. They, yeah, they, like they USC should be up there. Yeah, Liberty they're... does an insane job. Liberty, that's the so, one that's there's not. There's so on many here. schools. 
Liberty is yeah, the one that's If you get there. a chance, you gotta you gotta do a podcast with Cassidy Paxton. Hundred percent. She is so beyond talented. Just crazy. I may be I may be tripping a little bit, but I think I reached out to her once or twice. Yeah, she I worked with her at Baylor and she does a tremendous job and also takes really amazing photos. But yeah, there are that list was questionable. But it was, I, I'm glad I was on it. <laughs> I think it's a cool thing to have, though. Like you said, it's like yeah, yeah, you know, it definitely it, is. It de- develops some competitiveness, you know, outside mm-hmm. of the football field. You know, for yeah. it develops some competitiveness for the for the creatives. I, I think it. I think yeah. that's a really cool. It'd be thing. cool if they did like a mid season, like here's an update, because because like TCU hired Matt Lang, and they've got to be skyrocketing up to the top. Like there's just so many. So many good people out there. I just tweeted at them. I quote tweeted, do a midseason update. There we go. We'll see, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Perfect. Um, yeah, like that, that's 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 the whole concept of, of something. I, I like how you put it there as well. You said like looking at that, you're ranked 26. You're in the top 30 out of, you know, in out of an insurmountable amount of, you know, division one collegiate, you know, football programs. Mm-hmm. But, you yeah. know, creatively that, 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 that allows you, like you said, to, to be motivated and to, um, you know, to see an upside and always wanting to improve. You know, I feel like, I feel like with, with some programs, you know, where there's a lot of tradition, the aspect of stag of being stagnant in creative, because mm-hmm. it's like, it's preferred by your audience. You know, I feel like that's a very, a very, what's the word? prevalent thing prevalence is the right word yeah. there, right yeah i feel like that's a very prevalent thing and i think that like seeing that in like no advancement with a team that has such such unique culture and unique you know tradition behind it you know not gonna name not gonna name any teams but um i i just think you know moving forward taking little steps even if it isn't even if it isn't um big steps just little steps taking little steps forward yeah. it's always is always good for for the creative landscape and um mm-hmm. w- yeah and like you said it's so tough because like facebook comments are the worst place you could ever look worst. but every single like older person comments on the text that i use on graphics which is tough for me because i personally love the way it looks <laughs> but i also don't want to alienate like 60 percent of our fans by not making them be able to see so it's being able to find that balance of this looks really cool and i can read it but can someone scrolling on facebook read it so it's tough for and our whole creative department sometimes struggles with trying to just figure out how we hit that sweet spot of like looking good for the younger crowd and the student section and all that fun stuff Mm -hmm. but also looking back at like you said, the tradition and like all the people that have come before. So yeah, mm-hmm. that's definitely, definitely a tight rope to walk sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to plug a previous episode, Mallory Heiser's episode. We talked, we talked about this. We also talked about this on Anthony Garo's episode as well. He works with BC. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. The, yeah, the aspect of, you know, there's a creative route that you want to go and there's, you know, us as designers, we may not think about readability wholeheartedly, you know, sometimes because we think it looks so freaking dope, but then, you know, yep. like you said, <laughs> that those, those couple comments you get on Facebook there gets some, you know, shed some light on, on the situation where readability may become an issue. Um, so yeah, the finding that balance is, I think is just so tough naturally yeah because you're you're wanting to create something like the emphasis on a younger crowd i feel like that's an all across the board type of thing because social media is becoming Mm -hmm. more and more relevant um you know the the following is getting somewhat you know consistently younger as the years go by so making things look more intriguing is a little bit more important than making sure things are readable to where um you know utilizing text as as texture and using it as a texture element, you know, Mm -hmm. for it not to be read for the older audience, maybe something where they try to read it and they don't know what they're going to say. They don't know what it says. And maybe it has game information in it. They don't know, but to where the younger audience may recognize like, Hey, that's just kind of used for a, for an aesthetic type of thing, you know? Yeah. Finding that middle ground is, is just tough. It's, it's just super tough. I think for me, a lot of times I'm like, Oh, it's also going to be in the tweet 
or it's going to be in right. the <laughs> caption. And I'm like, I know that, but, but yeah, sometimes people can't put two and two together and can uh, understand that one. Well, that's just the nature of, you know, nature of people. <laughs> sometimes I, yep. what, what's the saying? You, you, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink or something like that. Or, mm-hmm. you know, what, whatever the saying is, but yeah, there's yep. it. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like I I've over the past like couple of years, I've been designing my fair share of like infographics and like stack graphics and stuff like that. So it's like being able to know where that happy medium is, is still a problem, but, but knowing what to consider is like, I, f- I feel like is the more important thing. Like, yeah, can, I think, I just think consideration of audience goes a little bit farther than, than, than readability, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, for what, sure. What is the audience for Badger football now? Like, is it getting, is it getting younger? Are you appealing more to the students or? Um, I think we slowly are as we're getting a little bit more freedom to kind of do what we want. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that helps a ton having, having our people that are above us trust us a little more. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think a lot of schools are headed that way too being being in a situation where designers are being trusted more to do what they were hired for Mm -hmm. um so i think we are slowly getting towards the direction that we are hoping for um but yeah it's always going to be a struggle to find that balance of who really appreciates what you're doing Mm -hmm. for sure um, one thing, one, one question, just to, just to round things out here. I'm very curious. I mean, you've been working in collegiate athletics, um, for a while now. Um, that's, that's kind of where you're residing and, and where at least it seems like you're finding a lot of your joy. Um, what is your, you know, what, what's kind of your favorite aspect of work, working in collegiate athletics? Um, I think it's being able to just kind of be a part of that team. Like, just being in the bench to take pictures is like a player leaning over and be like, did you get that? I think that's pretty cool. Um, I think it's just cool to kind of like be at the front of it with recruiting and you're making graphics for a kid and then you actually get them in the building and you take photos for them and like build that relationship and then they commit. And so I think that for me is probably the biggest part of it is just seeing that person develop from like a junior in high school to hopefully I'm here long enough to see them graduate and Mm -hmm. potentially go to the NFL. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a big part. And like, I was only at Baylor for 11 months, but I still am in contact with guys that are now in the NFL, which I think is just really cool that like, I mean, nothing, I'm just the designer. I, I took pictures of you in college but for them to still reach out and respond whenever I text them, I think is pretty cool just mm-hmm. to see and have that relationship that like, yes, these guys do do more than play football. Mm-hmm. So I think that that for me is probably the biggest um, part that I love about this job is just seeing how good of like genuine people these guys are. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. I think, I think that, that whole aspect of, you know, of sports in general, being able to shed light on the personality rather than the player, you know, like everyone knows them, especially in football, they got a helmet on and there's a number on their back. They're, they're a person with a number that plays wide receiver, you know, from, for the most of the audience and most of the fans, that's all they know, but to be able to give them a medium and give them an opportunity to, you know, showcase who they are, where they're from, what kind of person they are, you know, their interests, their hobbies, those type of things. It's like, you know, when you have that power as a creative and have that privilege, I guess, not power, um, yeah. have that privilege to help them with that. And, you know, especially when they're invested in it too, when they're, when they're invested in it and they're all in, they're like, you know, they're, there's, you know, emotion with the camera and, you know, they know they're having a good time. They know you're having a good time. It's, it just makes it so much easier, but yeah, that, yeah. that whole bringing the personality to light is that's, that's a big thing that's happening now in sports too. It's being able to bring that relate relatability gap closer and closer and closer. Yeah. And that actually helped kind of blow up our, one of our bigger projects this summer. That was one of my favorite things I've done since being in the real world. Um, it's a ways back on our Instagram. If you or anyone listening hasn't seen it, we did a series on, uh, it's called Badgers Inked. 
and it was a story and it was a like photography based but also a little bit of video piece on tattoos that the guys have and like everybody has them and i thought hey it'd be a really cool idea to like sit a couple guys down and have them tell us why like why they have pictures of people on their arms why they have like a cityscape why do they have any of that Mm -hmm. so we me and our lead videographer and then social media person we kind of sat down and like built out this whole plan and and got it approved and so we did a whole series I think it was six guys and we started just with upperclassmen and we're going to kind of make it a yearly thing so guys kind of have something to look forward to as they get older and kind of stay in the program Mm -hmm. um but it was just a cool like little 30 minute session just sit down in the stadium we took a bunch of pictures all around and then they went and just sat in like it was just like an infinite black room and talked about why they had what they had and it was just really special hearing and like you could tell no one has ever asked about that Mm -hmm. like one guy had a picture of his grandma in like a mariachi outfit (laughs) and he said she was the first like female mariachi performer in wherever his hometown in mexico was and like you could tell like emotion was coming out of him that no one had ever asked that question Mm -hmm. so i thought it was really special to get to do something like that and and after the fact guys would like show their families these pictures we took and families were loving that side of football because that's Mm -hmm. not something you see which which was a ton of fun to just get to kind of be a part of that we took inspiration i think um chanel i don't remember her last name she was at tennessee for a while she's with the panthers now she did a series like much like this, but just with shoes. And I was like, we could totally take this a little deeper and talk about tattoos because everyone's got them. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's capitalize on who our guys are and why they have what they have. Mm -hmm. So that was a ton of fun. For sure. Yeah. Those, those cool little like one-off like mini docu-series type of projects are always, always super cool to find now. It's like, you know, you can, you come across these amazing feats of production and amazing feats of, you know, design just to showcase who these players are and the importance of yeah. that. And, and the, you know, the, the, uh, the reach that it gets and, and, you know, that aids in the relatability and, and the, um, the impact that it has on the fans and the audience as well. It's, it's, mm-hmm. yeah, that's, yeah, it's, it's super cool to see, to see when that comes to fruition, you know? Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, man, I I really appreciate you coming on today. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your um out of your out of your day today, um out of your evening, um to to hop on and 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 sit down and, and talk shop a little bit. Um, I hope it was an awesome time for you. <laughs> yeah, appreciate you having me. It's it's a ton of fun just to be able to talk with someone who gets it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I I, I appreciate that. Have... I'm glad to be listed as someone who gets it. <laughs> that is fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I love what you're doing with this series, and hope to hope to you uh, just keep it up forever. That's well, the, I, that's I'm, the goal. I'm so close to 100, I can't stop now, right? <laughs> yeah, you can't. Once you hit 100, you might as well go for two, and like it just keeps going. Right, keeps keeps the snowball, you know. Um, <laughs> but anyways, for the audience, go down below again. Check out all of Ryan li- Ryan's links. Um, his Twitter and his portfolio will be down there. Make sure you, um, if you have any questions, you know, reach out to him. Don't be afraid to reach out to him. Um, he'll be. I mean, it sounds like you'd be happy to answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please do if you have any any questions or interest please let me know for sure well there you guys got there you go guys um anyways this has been episode 92 of the creative process podcast thank you for coming out today and listening hope you have a great rest of your day month week whenever you are listening to this and as always make sure you tell someone that you love them all right we will take it easy you take it easy see you in episode 93 all right peace